quick chat over here, mate. Can we just like talk over here real quick, Leonard? Um, why the fuck is there a pole going through the car here, mate? <laughs> Um, I don't have my big light on at the moment because I'm just, it's like a mood right now. Sometimes when I edit, I just like to edit in pure darkness. Lucky I've got the A7S and I'll just uh, bump the ISO a bit. <laughs> I have 40,000 ISO right now. Probably look fucked and I, I'm, I, well, I don't even know what kind of color grade's gonna go on this video. So if I look all right, then whatever. I, I'm most likely gonna look fucked because I don't have proper lighting, but anyway. Welcome to today's video. <laughs> Today I'm gonna to edit some of your photos. I put up on my Instagram story a few days ago asking you to send your photos through to my email and then I can have a go editing some of your shots. And I got well over a thousand emails. So thank you to every single person who sent their photos in. Obviously I can't edit every single photo, but I did go through them um, and you know, <laughs> there was some funny as fuck captions that people wrote and I was, pissing myself at some of the emails I got. Anyway, I will shut the fuck up and we will get into this video. Okay, I really wanted to fix this photo up because it's fucked. Exposure can come up a little bit. And the first thing actually, I, what I should have done is straighten this image because that was really pissing me off. So your tint can come over. We can just bring all that tint out. Straight off the bat, I'm gonna come and get a radial filter and I'm just gonna hit O to make sure that, yep, we're affecting everything on the outside. We're gonna bring the exposure down and some clarity out. Quite a bit of clarity out because I want these lights to be a little bit more fuzzy. I'm not even joking, half of editing is literally playing around with these sliders until you like what you're seeing. That's literally how I go through an edit. So I'll go through and literally just bring each one of these sliders up and down and just literally go pretty much through every single one of the colors, split toning, just everything. I just go through the whole thing. It's a little bit harder for me as well because I didn't take the photo. So I don't know the whole scenery and what the photographer has envisioned. So it becomes a little bit harder for an editor. If you're just editing someone else's photo and you weren't there, like for me, for example, I always find other people's photos more difficult or challenging to edit, but I like a challenge. We're gonna come into the blue slider, hit up the luminance. Like I said, I wanna really exaggerate some of these lights here. Purple sliders, they can fuck off to the blues. And what we can also do as well, because this guy here, he looks like he's about to die because his skin's really pale now. Focus is a little bit out, but I'll pay that. I'll, I, I reckon the, well, it's a little bit shaky. It's not the focus is out, it's just a little bit shaky, but. I'll pay it because you're shooting at 1 40th of a second uh, with an 85 mil. You probably could have bumped up the ISO a little bit more just so you had a bit more shutter speed for a, a sharper image, but whatever, I'll, I'll pay it. Go into our brush tool by hitting K on your keyboard. We're gonna brush around this dude's head and his hands and we're gonna bring some more yellow or just his just natural skin color um, into his body. And as we edit the image, this will probably change anyway. So we'll probably have to come back to this, but we'll start off with something like that. This is already a huge difference already. Let's get another radial filter in here. One a bit closer around his torso on the top of his head. We're gonna invert it this time. So we're basically just gonna be affecting him. And we're gonna be brightening him up a little bit. Bring the shadows down a tiny bit. We're gonna bring the clarity up a little bit. Maybe even a bit more exposure up. And the shadows down a bit. And the exposure is like just the general brightness of the whole area, but we want I don't want too much shadows to be coming out of his jacket and stuff. So we're sort of just trying to balance them. I think that's what editing is all about. It's just um, finding the balance. <laughs> Come back to our original radial filter. And this is just like a big sort of vignette that I make in just about every one of my images because each, each one of my images, I like to have a key focus that your eyes are supposed to go to in the image. So I think radial filters really help. Looking pretty good so far. I'm liking it. All right, uh, graduated filter, the rectangle. We're gonna bring one of those up at the ground here. We're gonna bring, I don't know, like I said, I'm just gonna play around with these settings a little bit. A bit of saturation, temperature can come across a little bit. And I love this new feature as well uh, in Lightroom, the hue adjustment. So I can just bring it across. So I want the ground to be a bit more aqua and I can just bring it across slowly and do that. Or I could just not use the fine adjustment and make it a completely different color, which is mad. Imagine doing that. I used to do that. That was like my old editing style was like blue and pink. <laughs> Very full on. 
All right, something that I'm a bit finicky about as well, just a little detail here, is that his shoes are actually like, the bottom of his shoes are white. And now they're blue. And that's not a good thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into the brush. Uh, while you're still selected in your graduated filter, so how, this is still selected, so we're still in the graduated filter, but then we're gonna click brush. I'm gonna hold option, which is gonna be our eraser. So our brush eraser in our graduated filter. And I'm just gonna change the size of it here and just literally delete all the blue out of the sole of his shoe here. Delete the blue out of his sole, banished to the nether. And we can even go one step further, get out of that completely, open up a new brush, and then just brush completely over the shoe again. Trust me, I know it seems like this is just overkill, but it's the details of an image that really make it come together. I'm just gonna zoom back out and the image is just gonna be absolutely fucked. And I'm gonna be like, ta-da! <laughs> next detail. Can you spot the next detail? No, it's this, it's the camera strap. The fake off-white camera strap every amateur photographer has. <laughs> I'm surprised more people haven't made memes about these like off-white camera straps because I swear to God, I saw ads for them everywhere and like literally every amateur hype beast photographer has to have one. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it, just an observation. Brushed over it here. Like I said, before we gotta find the balance. Find the balance. So we don't wanna overpower it. Oh, why is the saturation at 100? That's why it's fucked. Saturation can come up maybe 10% and a bit more yellow here. Find the balance, find the balance. We can come back to his skin tones now, bring in a bit more yellow into there, tiny bit more, a bit more saturation as well. Oh, that's a pretty big difference so far. Next up, we're gonna to touch the tone curve here. I'm gonna bring it up and across. It's a little bit too dark there now, so I'm gonna bring a little bit of contrast out and I'm gonna bring some shadows up slightly here, which we can also do here as well. I'm gonna make some more dots in my tone curve. This one's gonna control your highlights at the top here. The higher you go up on the tone curve is the closer you are to your highlights. It's your mid-tones and your shadows here. So I think the shadows are a little bit dark, so we can just bring it up a little bit like that. And we can really boost like the highlights of your image by just bringing this side of the tone curve up a little bit as well. All right, and the more you bring this up is the more faded your image gets. Next photo, Beast NSX photo from The Rub Doctor. Great username, by the way. And he has sent me this beautiful shot of his NSX. What is that? 105 f1.4, good lens, good shot, and even better car, and even better conditions. Actually, no, the car's better than the conditions. Let's see what we're working with here. Dude, this photo is so well exposed, holy shit. Oh, it's on a tripod, that's why. Far out, man. Probably could have shot with a tiny higher aperture just because like the car's parked in a little bit of an angle. So the front of the car here is a bit out of focus from the rear. So could easily next time use like an F2.5 or F2.8 and that should just get that front, of the, that front part of the car a bit more in focus. But such a minor detail you if you just post into Instagram, you wouldn't even notice that. <laughs> All right, gonna get a graduated filter here. Bada bing, bada boom, right on the ground there. Exposure down, clarity up a fuckload. Another graduated filter from the sky. A little bit of an angle here. Exposure up a bit, a bit more saturation. I'm gonna bring my oranges in and my purples in. Just gonna really make that a very vibrant sunset. I still want to keep that purpley haze, you know what I mean? Ooh, fucking good shot, man. Very happy, put a smile on my dial. 10% clarity, actually, probably go a bit more. 20% clarity. I'm gonna bring this part of the tone curve up like we were doing in the last image. A little bit, tiny little bit of fade. Does not go astray. Oh, it's a good shot, man. Highlights up a little bit here which, like I said, in balance, everything in balance. You're gonna put the highlights up a bit, gotta bring the shadows down a bit. That's what we will do, just a little bit, just like that. Car's a little bit dark here, so let's just try this. We're gonna try a radial filter over the whole car here. Invert that, bring the shadows up a tiny bit, exposure up a tiny bit. Feather around the whole sort of area here. A bit more clarity, a bit more exposure. We don't want to bring those highlights up too high because we don't want to overexpose those tail lights. This is a perfect example of when black wheels 
are perfect. And they're not even black, they're like a really dark gray. But the reason why this looks so good is because the wheel has silver in it. So that's why if you're gonna have black wheels, they can work, but they do need to be complemented by silver. It's just like editing, just like everything in balance. Actually, no, cut that, that was shit. <laughs> So the jokes are gonna get better. They're only getting worse. Maybe the highlights can come up a tiny bit more here. Before, after. I uh, I do like this photo. I think it's a sick photo. And I think it's actually sick if it was something like this. I feel like it's like a, a a movie thumbnail to like, you know, it's called like the rider. And it's just, this is the thumbnail. We want to make some hectic looking thumbnail. And we're going to figure... Does he have a front number plate? Where in the fucking world do you need a front number plate for your bike? Ew. <laughs> Far out. Sorry to hear that, bro. <laughs> we don't have that in Australia. I've actually never seen that before. Wow. Far out. So what I'm seeing is a lot of green in the background here. A lot of yucky yellows. We don't want any of that shit. We want some way cooler colors. We want it a bit brighter. We want it just, just better. We just want everything better. So we're gonna bring our temperature down here. Our tint, we might try that tint across a bit to the purples. Highlights can stay where they are for now. And bring some clarity out. It's like you just see what a night preset does. I think I like dull blue. Let's just try that. Temperature across a little bit. Shadows up a tiny bit. Damn, it seems like the more clarity I bring out, Somehow the more noise appears. Uh, I didn't think that was possible. But we are at 6,400 ISO, so that, there you go. All right. Well, yeah, I don't think the image wants me to bring the clarity out, but I do need to bring some clarity out of the background. So let's just go into our brush tool here, and we're just going to brush around the background here. And we're literally going to denoise it, just increase the fuck out of that, and bring some clarity out of the background. Just to make it a bit softer in the background. Yeah, nice. All right, I'm just gonna run a, uh, a brush tool over the side of the bike here as well. It doesn't need to be that sort of orange. Bring it that temperature down a little bit, but I do kind of like it. Just bring the tint across a little bit more. I'm just gonna reset the tone curve. Sometimes, well, me personally, when I apply a preset, um, I'll just redo the tone curve once I chuck it on. Okay, I will bring up highlights here a little bit. Shadows down. That's mad. All right, let's bring, let's come out of the split toning here because I reckon that's going to make a big difference. The shadows, let's do like a dark sort of green shadow and the highlights can be sort of a blue. No, maybe not a dark green. Maybe a lighter blue shadow and the highlights can be close to the purples. All right, a little bit of noise reduction coming in. Luminance, maybe about 27%, a bit of contrast. Before, after. So I got sent this. And this was a caption for the email. This does not change the fact that there is 12 million penguins in Antarctica and 500,000 people in Malta. So if every penguin came to go in Malta, or came to Malta, every Maltese would have to fight 24 penguins. And this was his photo he sent in. And like, what the fuck am I gonna do with this? Far out. Like, I guess auto straighten. I guess uh, crop it in. Change temperature. Hey, like, that's pretty Malta. Is that, that's probably the whole country. <laughs> no kidding. And now it's Antarctica. Dude, that has just single-handedly made the photo that much better. I feel like there's still some details we can retain out of this. What if we did that? Actually, no. Let's swap it around. What if we did... If that's darker there, what if we darken that? And brighten that side. Oh, what have I done? That actually turned out fucking sick. <laughs> what happens if we dehazed it? Oh, wrong way. Yeah, maybe like just, just a little bit of dehaze. Because dehaze can be overpowering. But it's cool. Minimal, but cool. Alright. GMC! Big truck. Okay, we're going to go into crop. I literally press R, that's the hotkey. And then I double tap X. Because every time you tap X, it chooses if you want landscape or portrait and it would just like just a quick way of that I like to um, zoom in my image basically so I'm just used to doing that now but if it's just like all trees like we just do like that sort of composition there and we just get rid of this light pole we just press Q I love my hotkeys so 
Sorry if I do something and I'm just appeared in a different tool because sometimes I forget to just tell people what the hotkey is. You can just come click on this, it's the spot removal. It's gonna brush over it like that and it does a fucking terrible job. Great, thanks Lightroom. We'll try again. There you go. That was a great job now. Get rid of the light. Boop. All right. It's very bright down here. When we, we press J, it'll tell us like what's like very overexposed in your image. So we just bring the highlights down, all those red particles sort of go away. And the blue particles are what's too underexposed. So if we bring up our shadows here, you can see that that's nice and balanced. But that's if you're playing by the rules. And we fucking hate rules on this channel. So I'm not gonna hit that key, and I'm gonna do whatever I want, which is, Vibrancy, more vibrancy out of those trees, and we're gonna change them from green to orange. Straight fucking them. Not like that though, that's yuck. Like that is, I don't fucking edit like that. People send me shit like that all the time, and be like, ooh, two and orange. Yeah, my photos sometimes happen to have orange colors and blue colors in them, but it's not that shit. Like don't fucking send me that. That's not, like that's not how I edit. You've seen the extent that I go to to make my photos. It's not that. You know what? I'm going to use only the brush tool. Okay, fuck camera calibration. I'm only going to use the brush tool for this whole image. I'll fucking show you. I do not edit teal and orange. I will show you. I'm not in denial. I'm, I'm the opposite of in denial. I'm in the right. <laughs> I actually don't know what the opposite of in denial is. <laughs> Let's just select around all these trees here. Yada, 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 yada. Good enough, good enough. Saturation up, hue, change to orange. No, it's teal. Okay, can't go too much in the sky here because I don't want to affect the sky too badly. Okay, maybe this was a bad idea just choosing the brush tool to edit this whole image, but no, whatever, we're sticking with it. Fuck, that was, okay, no, no, we're sticking with it. Okay, brush tool on the ground here. Okay, press O to see what you're working with. Zoom in, that would probably help if I just zoomed in instead of like trying to squint and see what I'm doing. <laughs> Doesn't matter how long I've been editing for, I'm still an absolute idiot. Okay, little tip as well. If you want to quickly brush over something and you click somewhere, instead of like brushing in a straight line, you just hold shift and click somewhere and it will just brush that whole section. So if you're brushing lines somewhere, that's like a quick, easy, accurate way to do it. And it works the same for erasing. So if you hold option, and, and shift at the same time, it'll just delete like certain parts, like very quickly and accurately. Okay, put the mask in, we're gonna drop the exposure down and bring the clarity up. Okay, maybe I do need a graduated filter. No, okay, you know, I'm just gonna try, we're gonna put a graduated filter in, we're just gonna see what that looks like and then we're just gonna delete it. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, okay, that looks pretty good. Now sort of the brush is sort of ruining the color of the trees. I guess I can brush over the trees properly now because I don't have to worry about what the sky is looking like. This is something really important and something I take notice to a lot when I'm looking at photos and other professional photographers will see it as well. Let's just zoom right into here, okay? And if you just see on the outline of the car here, there's, a, there's just a random highlighted area from the tire to the ground, like it's just highlighted here. And that is mainly sometimes from not a good enough blend from basically the two different colors, which can happen from way too much clarity in the image. So because my clarity on the ground here is high as fuck, when I bring it down, we're seeing a lot less of that outline, basically, that stencil that it makes, because it's very ugly, and if you don't think it's ugly, that's because you don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> so we still need clarity in the ground, but not too much. And that's because I fucked up and I shouldn't have been cocky and said I can do this whole thing with a brush tool. And delete that and we use a graduated filter instead. So it fades in that dark look into the ground instead of like doing a brutal overkill. Darken the ground a little bit. Brush tool because now it's affecting the car. We're gonna hold option. We're gonna delete the brush around the car. Just around like that. And then we're gonna bring another graduated filter I'm gonna drag that one up a little less. It's gonna affect there. The ground can come even a bit more darker and a bit more clarity. All right, next thing. A little bit of fade, bring that across, just like that. Highlights can come out because the sky is looking a bit grim there. 
And what might actually look good here is if we go over all this and paint the yellow. You know, I can actually auto mask this. Click auto mask and we're just gonna go over these. Saturation up a little bit and bring those yellows back out of the road here. It's the details. Detail, detail, detail. And we might even be able to go into Photoshop in a little bit and flip this and put it on the other side of the image as well. So let me just go through all of these. Before we go into Photoshop, I just want to try something really quickly. Sometimes when you don't have a polarizer, even I forget to shoot with a polarizer sometimes for my car images, let's just go over the windscreen here and we just make it black. I actually, strangely enough, learnt this little trick, like making the windscreen black, from a San Francisco photographer called Guy With A Camera. If you don't follow him, and you're into car photography, you need to be following Guy With A Camera. Because I just like used to study his images so closely, and just like, like looked at them, I was like, what is he doing? How does he get him that clean? It's like he's using a polarizer, but it's like a step even further. And then I was like, I reckon he's painting those fucking windscreens black. So I gave it a shot and I got like the same sort of look. So guy with the camera, I, that's really bad. I don't actually know your name, but guy with the camera, if, you, if you're actually doing that, please confirm. All right, and we're also going to take the saturation out. Next thing, edit in Photoshop. What happens if we just grab the, we just go into here. We just look where the middle is. Grab one of those, Command J, right click, flip horizontally, chuck it there. <laughs> I used to do this shit so often. Like just flip every one of my images to make it look that much better, which it does. It does look a lot better like this, but we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna brush out this side of the car and literally just achieving this by using a mask. Uh, and then I've talked about this in plenty of other videos. If not, just watch a, a YouTube video about how to mask because it's it's not complicated, but it's just sort of, it's a little bit difficult to explain and it takes a little while. So there's plenty of videos on YouTube that explain what masking is and how to do stuff like this. But basically I'm just flipping it and putting it somewhere, but I'm using a mask as an eraser that you can come back and fix if you make a mistake, basically. And the only other thing on this image that's given me a bit of an eyesore is this little bin here. <laughs> so we're gonna come back into our uh, clone stamp tool. We're gonna hold S, pick a part of the image I wanna uh, replicate and literally just paint over it and just banish that son of a bitch to the nether. Say it with me. Banish it to the nether. Banish it to the nether. Can you comment below if you actually said that out loud? <laughs> Holy fucking illegal. <laughs> this is so illegal. <laughs> Not my photo, so I can't get in trouble for it. Far out, that is sick. It's gotta be Hong Kong. That is unreal. Far out. I don't know which way I like it the most. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Fucking hell, I don't know why anyone even subscribes to my channel with jokes like that. <laughs> <laughs> How do I edit drone photos? Far out. Drone photos are a little bit of a bitch to edit when there's not that good light. Like when the lighting's not that great. That's why we have presets. <laughs> oh, Liam's preset just fucking coming through. I love that grungy look. Let's boost those yellows a bit more as well. Bring the greens down a little bit. Like just have that desaturated sort of look. And the, bl the blue's already pumped far out. Pump the aquas a bit more. Pump the purples a bit more. And bring the purples to the blues. All right. Oh, it's the highlights. The split toning that sort of makes it. Oh, dude, that is a proper edit. <laughs> I'm so happy with that. Far out. Right. All right, let's just try a little uh, graduated filter. Not graduated, radial filter. Oh, let me do that again. Just a, around the center. And we're just gonna bring a little bit of clarity out. A little bit of darkness, just like that, just to center our attention a bit more to the center of the image somewhat. And maybe bring the blacks up a little bit. Fire out, that is a sick photo. 
That's the shit you want to get framed. Like, I love this shit. I love photos like this. Just having a bit of a look. I'm actually amazed by this shot. And the edit. Just making those yellows pop. That's what you want to do. Far out. This is some proper Aussie shit. <laughs> love it. It's a smoke bomb, yeah? Nice and legal. Okay, I know what to do. We're gonna play around with the colors here. We're gonna go up like that, down like this, and match them to every single one of uh, the tone curve colors. So try and just get them close as possible as you can. There's gotta be, a, I wish Lightroom had a way that, like in Premiere, you can see all the color profiles, like when you go in between each color and you can see exactly what you've done so you can line it up perfectly. But anyway, whatever. I'm not here to bitch and moan. We just need to get some more blues into the sky there. Okay, that's this is gonna help boost our colors together. I know it looks yucky as fuck, but watch what happens when we change the temperature. A bit more, too much. And the tint. Okay, no, not quite. We're gonna bring a graduated filter over from this side. Exposure up a little bit. Banish the purples. Okay, we get rid of the purples on this side as well. Bring them over to the blues a bit more. Bring that saturation down a little bit. Bring the luminance up. And we'll bring the blues over just a tiny bit. Saturation up and the luminance up as well. Oh yeah. That's the shit, baby. We're gonna get a brush tool here. I'm just gonna feather the colors a little bit here. We're gonna bring the exposure up a tiny bit. And we're just gonna play around with these colors so they just, they just mesh a little bit better. Oh yeah. I love the fact that there's like people standing here filming as well and then you can like just sort of see the street lights in the background but this little light up here it just doesn't quite make sense so we're just gonna press Q and just get rid of it this I think graduated filter from the bottom here I'm gonna bring that exposure up a little bit bit of clarity never hurt anybody I think maybe I can just rotate this graduated filter a bit and bring it over a bit more I actually did sort of like it when it was a bit more blue it's a fucking sick photo, man. There's so many, you see what I mean? There was so many good photos like this that I was like, that's a good shot, that's a good shot. But like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like a full day stream of just editing people's photos or something. So I can just like try and edit more of your shots. <laughs> anyway, I'm pretty happy with that. It's a selective editing and putting little details here and there that are really gonna set you apart. Like look at the graduated filters I've put in and the brush tools I've put in but it's all those details that come together that's going to make you edit. All right, there's two photos I got sent in here. I do like both of them. I, I really want to edit both of them. And I really like the look of this car. We don't get them in Australia here with a wagon shape. I think they got them more in Europe. I think that, that's a, what, is that a Bulgarian plate? BG, I think I said. I think it is. Don't even ask me how to fucking know that. <laughs> Actually, I think I low-key love Bulgaria. Love you guys. <laughs> um, I want to just make like a, like a really nice desaturated look here, but Le Leonard, Leonard, is that your name? Leonard? Um, quick chat over here, mate. Can we just like talk over here real quick, Leonard? Um, why the fuck is there a pole going through the car here, mate? <laughs> I get we're trying to be artsy, whatever, shoot through and stuff, but... Um, I personally just would not have done that. But look, A for effort, whatever the fucking saying is, I don't know. Now, we can still, I still want to work with it. It's still a great shot. I just wish the pole wasn't running through the car. I wish it was just like, if you could, if there was another pole there or something like, there was just another way to shoot that, I would recommend doing it that way. But anyway, let's just get to the point. We're going to bring some clarity. This is like sort of a grungier edit. We're going to make the red really pop here. With the, some luminance coming out of the image, and I think it affects the oranges as well a little bit. No, it doesn't. And bring all the yellows out, so we get that really desaturated look. And that's already done a little bit of a transformation here. Graduated filter, we're gonna bring it up from the ground, exposure down here, even more clarity down through here, but we don't want it affecting the car, so we're gonna click the brush tool, hold option, and just get rid of that across the car here. We put more on this fucking stupid pole though. Get on that pole, mate. Nah, okay, maybe we'll just leave the pole. I don't know how I'm gonna edit with the pole there. We're just gonna pretend that that's not there. <laughs> and then we're gonna bring a radial filter that's gonna come from the sky here to 
and it's basically going to act as our sun. So invert it, press O, make sure it's coming from the sky there, and we're going to increase the exposure there. And we took all the yellows out, but we're just going to bring the temperature over a little bit more, exposure up, and we just Basically, it's that natural lighting, but we're just gonna slightly increase it a bit more. Bit of vibrancy so we can get sort of the car and just a touch of saturation. And then we're also gonna come into our purples because you get like little purple strands in the image and blue sort of in the image. We don't take out all the blues, I don't think. Like you can if you wanted, that's, like that's definitely a style that you can do, but I don't like to take out all of them. Maybe we can play around with the crop a little bit here to make the pole look a tiny bit better. Like, I love the idea of shooting through things. Like, I'm, I'm not saying that that was a bad idea. I, I just think the placement of the pole could have been in a different area. <laughs> hey, that Google Pixel camera is not, not bad, hey. What are they at, like Google Pixel 5 or coming onto 6 now? And that's a Pixel 3. This goes to show that you can still take great photos on your phone. But those pixels, like, they do a really good job though. Like, for a phone camera, they, they are really good. Anyway, that's uh, before, after. I like that uh, cheeky sunlight trick? I like that trick. Let's finish this editing tutorial off with a bang. And let's edit this photo. I feel like there's a lot of detail we can suck out of these clouds here. So let's just zoom in like that. Slight angle here. And we can leave where the water meets the mountains in that bottom third. I think that's a really nice composition. I, I just feel like if I put a graduated filter from the sky here down, we're just going to suck out so many more clouds. Let's bring some of those blues out of the mountain because we know that the, the mountains aren't actually that blue. And the tone curve, we can bring a lot of mood out of, the, out of this image with the tone curve. Just bring it down like that. And if we, what if we bring a, let's just zoom out a little bit here, 1 8th. Bring a graduated filter like this and decrease the exposure a little bit, but just so it affects the top part of the sky there. Okay, we change the tint, bring a bit of purples in, bring a little bit more over to the yellow. Bring redness into the sky there. And then for the shadows, we'll bring a bit of blue in or green in, actually. Okay, and that's, we're trying to simulate the green on the hills and everything. That's not doing anything, the green there. The colors actually are not doing fucking shit. Thank you for that. <laughs> so everything can be done with a split toning. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm gonna go over the water here. And I'm just gonna make it a bit more blue. Nice. Force a bit of a sunset. It's a good day. Before after that is the end thank you so much to everyone who sent in their photos sorry that i couldn't get around to absolutely everyone what can i do i'm not fucking superman i can't edit everyone's photos even though i would like to but thank you for sending them in if you saw me earlier in this tutorial i was using liam's presets and some of my presets to edit some photos so if you want to grab those and download them you can head over to streamline.store to grab yourself a pack they each come with Lightroom tutorials and installation guides on how to use the presets and how to get them on your phone and everything like that. Plus they come with my raw photos and Liam's raw photos in to practice your editing like we've just done today if you wanna do that. Pretty much as long as you're getting out there, having a go, trying out different things with photography and your editing and stuff like that, that's pretty much all I want for anyone just giving it a shot. And even if you're not giving it a shot, maybe you've been doing this for a while, maybe you've been doing it for an even longer time than a while. Maybe you've been doing this for a long time. Maybe you're a pro and you're watching this. And it's just good to chill out and watch someone else edit someone else's photos. Thanks for sticking around basically to the end of this video. I hope I taught you something new today. If I did, maybe you can leave a like down below or consider subscribing to my channel. But with that all said and done, have a shit one and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>